Welcome back to Whiskey Bonded, I'm Conrad, and today I want to go over the bottles that make up the single barrels that come out of Buffalo Trace Mash Bill 2. Hancock's, Elmer T. Lee, Blanton's, and Rock Hill Farms. What's the difference? Are they worth going after? Which one should you chase? Should you try and buy any of these? Let's, let's decipher the reality from the bull. If you've been into whiskey for any period of time, then you're familiar with these four bottles. Probably starting with the Blantons, and then finding out about these other ones, and then realizing that they're really hard to get and probably overpriced. So what's the real difference between these four? What makes them special? Which one should you try and get? Which one should you not try to get? I'm going to give you my opinions, and uh, I'd, let's just face it, I'm right. So first of all, let's start by going through each of them and talking about what the differences are. All right, let's start with Hancock's Reserve. Hancock's Reserve is 88.9 proof. It is the lowest proof of these, in my opinion, the worst. Now, they're all kind of similar in their taste experiences, but they vary a little bit, and we'll go over what the differences between them is. Hancock's, to me, primarily is a little bit spicier. I think it's because the balance of sweetness is not quite there. It is a $60 to $70 SRP bottle but the secondary on this can get up there quite a bit. The secondary can be $180 to $200, and I've seen them for as much as $250 when I looked online today. It, it, that's gonna be way overpriced. This is the bottle that I am least interested in this lineup. Uh, it has a sticker for a label, so it's the cheesiest package, and you can't really see it, but there's bubbles in the, uh, in the, in the sticker. It does have a, a wooden cork on it that's kind of nice and hefty. The bottle shape is kind of pretty, but, uh, I think this one is the most overly hyped of the lineup. I, I, I don't understand why everybody's so excited about it. And this will be the last bottle of Hancock's that I ever buy. I'll tell you that right now. And then you have Elmer T. Lee. So Elmer T. Lee is one of the ones that is very highly sought after. It's difficult to find. Also has a unique bottle shape. It's 90 proof. I'd say this one is characterized by a little bit more balanced sweetness. Uh, this one has an embossed label on the front of it and a small neck with a small cork. This one has an MSRP of around $50 or $60, but you, you see these go crazy on the secondary, $250, $350. I saw one online for as much as $400. Again, I know they're scarce, but don't go after them. This one is definitely a better buy than this one. And oddly enough, at MSRP, this one I think is now less expensive than this one, which makes no sense to me. It does feel like the Hancock's Reserve is more widely available, but Elmer T. Lee is absolutely delicious. I love the taste of this one. Um, should you go after it for a reasonable price? Yeah, probably. I would definitely not pay those crazy market prices. It's just not that good. It's not $300 good. It's just not. Then you got good old Blanton's. Blanton's is the one that most, I'm sure that most of you or all of you know about. If you're watching this video to this point, you probably know about it. This is the 93 proof proofer, which is a, a nice proof point for this mash bill. Um, it has the best packaging in whiskey, probably with the grenade bottle and the steel horse topper. The dump dates are written on the packaging, so there's some, there's some really cool disclosure there. Again, not age stated, but it is a $70 to $80 SRP, and this one has got the lowest percentage of markup, surprisingly, with the secondary going $100 to $150. It seems like it's coming down on these and it's getting a little easier to, uh, to find them. The most expensive price I could find online was just barely over $150. Uh, this is a delicious single barrel bourbon. I think it is it is overly hyped and then overly hated on for the seventy or eighty dollars that it's supposed to be. The combination of what's inside of this and the bottle itself is absolutely worth buying. I do believe that anybody who goes through a whiskey journey should at some point buy a Blanton's, and you should have one on your shelf. I just don't know how you have a whiskey collection without having at least one bottle of them. And let's not talk about the horses that spell out the word Blanton's. Please tell me you knew about that, because if you don't, I'm sorry, I just messed things up for you. And now you gotta chase all the letters that are right there on it. And then obviously you guys probably know about the little galloping horses, and anyway, we're not gonna get into that, but Blanton's is really, really great. I think it is the best value of these, just because the, the markup is, tends to be the smallest, it tends to be the easiest to find, and it is the prettiest. I think the characteristics of the drink of the of the Blantons is that it is balanced. It is easy to drink with no spikiness. There is a great balance between sweet and spice. So whereas the Hancock's a little too spicy, the Elmer T is a lot sweeter. I think that the, the Blantons kind of comes in right in the middle there. Just the right amount of spice, just the right amount of speed, sweet. It's actually really delicious as, uh, as you can see by how much I've drank of that. But the last one is the Rock Hill Farms. This is my first bottle of Rock Hill Farms. 
Uh, it may be my last just because of how hard it is to get. This is the 100 proof um, bottling of this mash bill. Uh, I think that this is the best tasting of this mash bill. This bottle is characterized by complexity. It has a long finish to it. Again, beautiful packaging. This is embossed on the outside. It is the same bottle shape as you see in Caribou Crossing, but with a glass, uh, a blown glass top to it. Uh, these have a suggested retail price of about 60 or $70. Uh, they can go kind of crazy on the secondary. I think it's common to see them 175 to 275, but it, it did find one online for 400 today. I'd, I don't know why that is. I don't know why people go so crazy with these. It is definitely not worth that. But it does seem to me that in this mash bill, the higher the proof goes, the better the whiskey gets. And they literally, I would literally rank them in this order, personally. Hancock's, Elmer T, Blanton's, Rock Hill. And then obviously if you go up to the higher proof, like the straight from the barrel to the Blanton's goal, they do get better. This mash bill really benefits a lot from proof. Uh, I like Rock Hill Farms the best of these for sure. It just seems to have more complexity to it. It kind of dances around. It's well balanced. It's got a long finish to it. Man, that extra proof bump between Blanton's and Rock Hill is really, really evident. But there you go. There are the four bottles that make up the single barrel lineup without getting into the golds or the straight from the barrel or going down in the mash bill. But single barrels, all of them, all from Buffalo Trace, all the mash bill too. They're all quite good. I wouldn't recommend buying the Hancocks, but if you get a chance to buy the other three, you definitely should. And I'm not hating on Hancocks. I just don't think they needed to offer that. They would have been better with these three and you could have just left that one out. I mean, if it was super available or super cheap, sure, but it's not. Anyway, what do you think? Which one is your favorite of these? Have you managed to find any of those? If they were all the same price, which one would you buy? And do you agree with the increasing proof point making the bottle better? Well, that's my two cents on it. I'd love to hear what you think. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And head over to Instagram and TikTok and Patreon, the whiskeybonnetshop.com, the whiskeybonnet.com, and all of that stuff. But I'm Conrad. There you go. Buffalo Trace, Mash Bill 2. I hope I pulled the curtain back a little bit and showed you the wizard. Thanks for watching.